Hey there folks, Rel here. In the background you'll see some random gameplay from Planetside 2, but this is the third part of the armchair game design series, which is more of a vlog where I get to muse about ideas for systems and video games that I would like to one day create. So if that's not up your alley, then feel free to shut this video down or just turn off your brain and enjoy the gameplay. In the last episode, we talked about connecting a player to their game based on what type of player they are, basically giving a player a reason to care and continue to play whether it be by investing them emotionally, or giving them reason to be competitive, or even allowing players to garner recognition for their behavior in-game. In this episode though, I figured we'd talk about how to do very diverse factions in a game, talking about the challenges that are associated with it, and hopefully be able to offer up some solutions. Now, when I talk about diverse factions, I'm referring to something more like StarCraft and less like Planetside 2. In StarCraft, the factions are wildly different, not only in their strengths and weaknesses and aesthetics, but even in the types of units that they have access to, how they manage the resources, and how they build out their bases. In Planetside 2, the factions are fairly similar by comparison. Each faction walks into a fight about in the same way, despite the presence of different strengths and weaknesses. The best example of diversity in Planetside 2 is probably the Vanu Sovereignty's Lancers, the Heat Mechanics, and Mag Riders. Lancer teams, and to a lesser degree Raven Maxes, can burst down a tank column from a world away, which offers up a unique advantage in dealing with a particular type of strategy. Heat mechanics go away towards removing the need for ammo resupplies, which has the potential to modify squad compositions and such, or at least it would, if the trait was more proliferate. And your mag riders can easily fight from locations that other MBTs wouldn't have access to, which has the potential to change how a certain base is approached. Aside from that though, most of the diversity in Planetside 2 is on a very individual level, instead of affecting some type of overarching strategy. The NC's slower, more powerful weaponry will feel different to the user, but it's not going to affect the positioning that your squad takes or how you play your heavy assault. The TR's high capacity magazines will affect when you'll have to reload, but the guy on the receiving end is still eating the same bullets as you would eat from any other faction. That said, the problem with creating StarCraft-like diversity in a game like Planetside 2 is that everybody is free to do their own thing, and the game doesn't encourage faction-specific strategies in order to be effective. Example being, the reason why you see so much faction diversity in RTSs like StarCraft, Command & Conquer, and Warcraft 3 is because it's much easier to achieve when there is a single player at the helm. Each Zergling isn't just mindlessly wandering around the map doing whatever it wants, it's the guy at the keyboard that is commanding a horde of Zerglings that makes them effective. Having specific strategies that can be recognized, altered, and countered is what allows for faction diversity in a game, but it's much harder to achieve that when each player is acting as a separate entity. This is why, with what little diversity we are allowed, namely Phoenix teams, Lancer teams, lockdown point defenses and the like, are only commonly done by organized outfits and platoon leads, because much like that single StarCraft player who's commanding a horde of Zerglings, the platoon leader can similarly command the troops in their platoon. It's because of the lack of organization in the rest of the game, the vast majority of the player base, that it's safer to focus on very similar factions with different flavors, opposed to being truly diverse. An analogy to more easily describe the distinction would be, Faction flavor is more like having sedans from different manufacturers, whereas true diversity is more akin to each faction having a different type of vehicle altogether. That said, I do think that there are ways to achieve this heavier sense of faction diversity, even in a free-for-all environment like Planetside 2. And the way to get there would be to strongly encourage faction strategies by limiting what they do and do not have access to, instead of basically giving everybody most of the same stuff and then adding flavorful items on top of it. For example, if you just take a moment and imagine if VS didn't have access to Sunderers at all. Instead, what if, when you went to your vehicle console, you'd see an option to drop in an orbital spike at the target location. Now, the spike would drop and deploy into a contested hex while still observing the same no-deploy rules as anything else, and the spike would act the same as a deployed Sunderer in that it'd become a spawn location for allies. The difference is just that you wouldn't have to pull it and drive to that location. The spikes themselves would be much more fragile than a Sunderer, but you could bet that there would be many more of them thanks to the ease of access. Now I'll do you one better. What if, instead of galaxies, you had a vehicle that was basically a StarCraft II warp prism, in that it could fly over a location, deploy, and then it would teleport in allied ground vehicles. 
In this case, when you would go to your vehicle console to pull your mag rider or your lightning tank, you'd be able to see these deployed prisms on the map, and then you'd be able to spawn your vehicle at that location instead of out of the vehicle bay. By emphasizing mobility like this and integrating it into the experience in a way that's accessible, you completely change how VS would approach each and every encounter, and what the other two factions would need to do to deal with you. The NC and the TR could be attacked from any direction, in force, at a moment's notice, instead of telegraphing their movements by moving convoys from one lattice to the next. Now in this respect, you would have a completely different type of game on your hands. Of course, you would have to change the way that TR and NC operate as well. For TR, maybe instead of multiple deployment areas, you have a focus on heavily fortifying a singular location. So your average Sunderer could deploy at a location per usual, but instead of deploying like an AMS, it would unfold into more of a building, with a few different bays and a much larger no-deploy radius. Then you would have additional Sunderers that could basically drive up to and connect to this deployed Sunderer, allowing it to further fortify that location. Maybe the first deployed Sunderer would allow allies to spawn in per usual, then the second Sunderer would increase the overall health of the structure and set up a proximity radar, and then the third Sunderer would further increase the overall health of the structure and add a vehicle bay, and then the fourth Sunderer could add in an air pad. Having the sort of everybody band together mechanic heavily encourages that kind of cooperation and singular fortification strategy, because a lone deployed Sunderer would basically just die and be worthless. These are just some easy examples and they aren't to be given too much thought. The point that I'm trying to make though is that in order to have multiple very different factions in a game like Planetside 2, you would need to be able to guide players into using certain strategies by giving them an overwhelming incentive to do so. In Planetside 2, I have little hope that the drastic changes to each faction's playstyle will ever really happen beyond an individual level because it'd require a massive investment of time and resources to pull off, but for future games, I feel like these sorts of distinctions are a definite possibility if you go into development with that in mind. Warhammer 40k Eternal Crusade, for example, seems to be on the right track with this. Each faction will have classes that perform similar functions, like support and healing and whatever else, but they'll do so in a different way. For example, one faction's healer will be able to revive allies from range, but be more fragile overall, whereas the other factions will have to revive allies from melee range. Another very bold distinction will be that free-to-play players are going to be playing as disposable greenskins, deliberately relying on population advantage and teamwork instead of individual character strengths to overcome the same challenges as the other hardier races. Now whether or not this will turn out the way that the developers expect to is up for debate, but they're at least walking into the design with faction diversity as a hardened selling point. That said, I would like to ask what you all think about faction diversity in general. Which games have done it right, which games you think could do it better, and if your comment is about Planetside 2, what would you like to see change? Maybe you're a fan of more diversity, or maybe you'd like all factions to be a little bit more similar, to remove the perceived discrepancies in power between each faction. If this video has been interesting, helpful, or entertaining, please feel free to like, subscribe, tell your friends about the channel, and be sure to let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I always enjoy discussing this sort of thing. Thanks very much folks, we're all signing off.